let's dive into another pressing issue where we'll be looking at road safety during the youth child especially in lagos nigeria effort and insights from the frscs you know as the youth child seasons approaches uh, road safety become a critical concern especially in lagos where traffic volume significantly increase now the lagos sector commander of the federal road safety corps under the leadership of core commander Kindy G. Hamzat uh, is at the forefront of ensuring uh, that uh, we have safety on the road. Now, this conversation also will help us highlight the commemoration of the World Day of Remembrance for Road Traffic Victims, emphasizing the need for protective measures to prevent accidents and support victims and of course their families let's quickly take an insight into one of the special reports we had from our legal state correspondent on the commemoration of those who actually lost their lives agencies and organizations connected to ensuring safety of life converged on frsc lagos head office to educate members of the public on the need to drive safely as part of activities to commemorate this year's world day of remembrance for road traffic victims speaking on the importance of the day zona commanding officer rs2 headquarters lagos adeoye irelewi said the frsc is doing all it can to minimize road crashes it's important that um, we keep you know the, 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 the loss in mind to safeguard future losses that is one of the important significance of today in addition to that we are also reminded to support and to act in order to prevent future reoccurrence lagos state frsc commander kende hamzat said the command has deployed its officers and men to ensure safety on all roads in the state. Uh, it's a wonderful day to, in, to inform everybody that crash is not just a mirage, it's a reality. And if you look at the theme of this year's one, is this day, this day, that day. Do you remember that day when my brother, my sister, my friends, my family is involved in the crime. 17th of November every year is a day known as World Day of Remembrance for Road Traffic Victims. Thank you so much, Aik Bojay Horia, for that beautiful insight. Now we are being joined live here at the Lagos uh, studio, the route commander, Elizabeth Olua Damilola Jayola. She's the Lagos Sector Public Enlightenment Officer. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you very much for having me. Good morning. Now we, good morning and good to have you. We heard your boss saying this day, yes, that, day, that day, he was emphasizing on mm. the team for the year. But let's start with, what is the focus of uh, the Lagos FRSC operation during this year's uh, Utah season? Okay, first of all, let me apologize that the sector commander will not be able to come on here mm. due to official assignment. And then, um, Again, I think I kind of like the, the theme of the World um, Traffic Crash Victims Remembrance Week mm. and the theme for the Ember Month campaign from the FRSC. You know, it kind of um, is an interwoven somehow. Okay. You know, when you look at that day mm. when the accident actually happened and you look at our team for this year saying that passengers should speak up against dangerous driving because crashes kill more drivers than passengers. You can imagine when you have an 80-seater bus, you have just one driver in that 80 Definitely. And the 18 perish. Passengers. You see? So that's why we are clamoring this year that passengers should please pick up. Other than that, our, our, emphasis, um, our emphasis is on reducing road traffic crashes and fatalities. Mm. And so we are doing so much um, like this we are doing here is part of um, first, um, enlightenment. enlightenment. We go okay. round to do enlightenment. We go round to speak to people on how to put their lives first. Put their lives in place of safety. Other than, you know, when a driver is driving and you don't know, it's just that driver and his conscience. Mm. Now, make that driver. If 18 people can be speaking against one driver, then we are going to put 
those 18 lives plus the driver's life into place of safety. Mm. So those are one, um, that's one of the things we are doing. Also, we go out to do um, enforcement. We go out to do traffic management mm. as well. We do traffic management during this Yota season. We'll do, like I said, we'll do public awareness campaign. Okay. Mm. We've started, thank God you were with us last week when we started this whole um, arrangement mm -hmm. of, um, we did um, press conference, we did road show, mm -hmm. we've gone town hall meeting. Town hall meeting is the initiative of the call marshal, Sheikh Mohammed, FCPA, MNI. Um, he looked at it that, okay, we've been targeting the drivers year in, year out. Mm -hmm. And this year, he thought about having all the stakeholders, mm -hmm. the road users, the stakeholders coming on that one roof and then we speaking to them other than going to the parks to talk to just the drivers mm. now we want to talk to everybody now if you have kids who is traveling you tell your kid please pick up if you are traveling you tell yourself please pick up and then when you see any uh, your, if your driver is driving recklessly you are able to speak against mm. that and then you put your life in now, a place so of some safety stakeholders feel you have a fantastic way of enlightening the public but your means of enforcement there seems to be a kind of disconnection we, we've seen cases where you find uh, your officers on the bonnet of vehicles and probably trying to enforce we don't know if that was the training they got you just see them holding on to the bonnet and on the highway is it another means of enforcement okay so let me let me put it this way when you find those officers on i think what we, you need to do is to find out at what point mm. did that officer get to that bonnet like jumping on the bonnet not jumping on the bonnet mm. um mr daniel they are not jumping on the bonnet okay. now there are cases of i don't know if you if you realize that there are cases where we have our men being killed on the road Definitely. and that's the, that's that's a man trying to put his life if you're not careful, that particular driver, why are we not talking about that particular driver who is pulling a car with a man on it? No, let's not look at it like it's an officer on that vehicle now. Okay, we should forget We're the uniform at, now. Yes, let's forget okay. the uniform now. Let's look at it like... Let's okay. deal with it man to man. Very... <laughs> no. Okay. But, you know, let's look at it that, okay, there is a man on my bonnet. Mm. What are you actually, as a driver, what were you thinking? Pulling a man with your car on your bonnet. Mm. Why not park? Why are, you, why are you running away? What are you running for? Where are you taking him to? You know, let's start looking from our own aspect. Not from the aspect of, oh, there is an officer on the bonnet. Mm. Do you understand? Okay. So, that, that's, that's the issue. Uh, that okay, let's move that. on now. How is the Lagos Sector uh, Command preparing to manage the anticipated surge. Uh, there's always heavy traffic in Lagos, whether we like it or not. Okay. Lagos is like the, uh, it's like London to some persons. Mm -hmm. They come here to rest. The business hub of, of Nigeria. And so how are we planning to manage this high surge? Okay, um, thank God you heard my, my sector commander, core commander, Kendi Hamzat say that they're, they're, um, we've done the deployment of our staff to places where they can manage traffic. Okay. Not just enforcement, not just for enforcement now, mm. but to manage that traffic. Also, we have strategic positioning of our staff at traffic hotspots. Mm. You know, where we have hotspots around in Lagos, we have our men manning those places. And then we have also have them at the major exits of Lagos. We have them on Lekki Ekwe Corridor. We also have them on Lagos Ibadan Corridor. corridor. Because yes. of the border we share. Because of the border we share. So that mm. those coming in, will not be causing problem into and we will not be causing problem into the we've outside. seen major issue where you have vehicles uh, running into the third Milan bridge and some assorting and all that what is the major cause of, of road traffic, yes. road traffic uh, yeah, let's, ask, let's okay. address that okay thank you very much i think um we need to look at speeding as one of the causes and then distracted driving is another one you mm. know you are trying to use your hand you know there's a reason why the steering is in circle oh, really? yes and then you're supposed to use your two hands to drive your eyes gazing on the road and your mirrors checking who is behind me who is on my side so when you are speeding without taking cognizance into those things i just mentioned do you want to use your hand to do something and then use another hand to you even see some 
on the highway, not putting their hands on the steering at all, and then they are speeding. Hmm. You are speeding to, to something else. Do you understand? Yeah. So let's look at speeding. Yeah. Let's look at... Um, okay, it's still part of recklessness. Yeah. Now let's look at um, those who drink and drive. Okay. You drink, you drink, you drink to a level where you do not have anything else. And then you want to pull a machine. Because a car is a machine. You want to pull a machine. Yeah. It's a no-no. There, there's, a, there's a level at which that alcohol will get to in your body that you are distracted from your focus. Your focus is supposed to be on the road. You want to check your, your, your mirrors. You want to check the person in front of you. You want to check if your car aligns on the road. But you know, alcohol takes you off. You are not aligning. You're going back and it's forth. Like, it's like a spirit. It's like a spirit. Mm. And then you see this distracted driving that I, we talk about. There's a way I put it to people. There's a psychology to you driving and you using your phone. Your focus can only be on a space at a time. Now you want to, your, your phone is something that is taking your, your focus. Your driving is another thing that is taking your focus. Your brain can only work for focus one time, for one thing at a time. Mm. So when you hear it, you know, it's like having an impairment that you, you want to put your half into this place. You want to put your half into this place and it's not possible mm. so before you know it boom something happens and then it results into crash mm. no so, right thinking nigeria want to die nobody really want to leave their home in the morning yes. and end up in the, uh, much in the mortuary worry. so can you help us share insight uh what are you putting in place to educate this is part of it anyway. part of it yes uh, public so what other campaign. thing are you doing to ensure that you really carry everybody along, especially the stakeholders. We do the media. We do the um, what we call domesticated enlightenment. We go to parks to enlighten them. We go to churches. We go to mosques. We do collaborations with um, organizations so that we can talk to their drivers, their staff. You know, we do a whole lot. We do road shows. We do jingles on the radio, we do jingles even on the TV, we mm. also do. We do media collaboration. What we have here is the collaboration with ITV. Mm. So, to spread the... And we also do special programs. We also do special programs to target commercial drivers. Now we're targeting everybody, the passengers and the drivers. So we're doing more to make sure that the passengers hear from us. Not just the drivers. Mm, not just drivers. Yes. So, okay, how, how does um, the FRS enforce compliance uh, with speed limits and other traffic regulations during this, especially this busy period? Okay, so um, I'm sure you know that um, we have the use of technology. We just um, launched the radar gun, Whoa. where um, a radar gun is put on the road to check the speed of the incoming vehicle. Mm. So we use those peak detecting device to, to, to check and, you know, put those erring drivers in check. And then we establish mobile courts where we have magistrate come in and our men. And then we do collaboration with other agencies like LASMA, the police, the DSS, the NDLE, and so much more to make sure that people adhere strictly to the traffic regulations. Mm. So um, our men are out there to also caution people, to also caution people and make sure they adhere strictly to the traffic rules and regulations. Mm. Talking about your men and ensuring adherence strictly to traffic regulations, you know, back then, when I was growing up, uh, we barely see your uniform outside. When you come out, there's a problem and everybody will just have to respect themselves. But it seems these days when you see an FRAC a person on the streets or on the road, people don't really take them serious again. Because back then you can't call anybody when you are found uh, wanting or violating any of the road use, you will just face it. But these days you just see people just pick call and the next thing they are off the hook. Does it happen in Lagos? Uh -uh. I was going to say that for me, here in Lagos State, I think we have our men not just adhering to FRC rules, but playing by the book. You are telling us that we don't have people who allow people to do one or two calls and just go like that. 
do one or two calls. Just make one or two calls and say, I'm calling your guard the top now. This matter, you can't hold me here. And they go. I want to say thank you to my, my, my sector commander. He's one person who will not condone those kind of things. So when you call him on the phone and you hear the way he talks to you, you will know his men will do, will do just what they are supposed to do on the road. So in Lagos State here, I'll tell you for free, they are doing what they are supposed to do on, on the road. Okay. Well, how do you now respond to emergency situations, uh, um, especially during this period? Emergency situations now coming from the outside to us, they can call one to two okay. to make to to for us to swing in. And once they call, they give us a definite area where the the happenings. And also we have our ambulances outside. Like I told you, our our men are also at at um, traffic hotspots where they will respond swiftly mm. to any emergency. So we have our, uh, uh, the way we swift into emergency is, is you know, within minutes. It's not, it's not something that we, we, we look into before we, we address it. I, I would like us to look at what you just said again. Now. Okay. You, you talked about responding to emergency issues. In some states, mm -hmm. you find FRSC vehicles not even moving very well. You see the vehicles on the road. Some of them, in quotes, they are not even roadworthy. Okay. And uh, it's being used by those who are enforcing uh, regulations on the road in Lagos. Do you have such vehicles? Thank God you said other states. In some states. That means you know that in Lagos State here, we don't have those kind of vehicles. And for us to go out and enforce, we go in full force. We go like, okay, when you see our men, mm. you see them, they are, they, are, they, are, they are up to standard. And when you see our vehicles too, Mm -mm. Not to push and start vehicle. I, 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 I can say that for free. You are authoritatively, authoritatively telling us that you have good vehicles. In if you have seen one, please okay. come and give me in the office. All right, let, let's move on. Uh, what role do you play now in raising awareness about the World Day uh, of Remembrance for Road Traffic Big Victims? Mm. Um, we hosted the memorial event yesterday where we laid the wreaths and, you know, um, spoke to people who attended and then we do deployment of ambulances and tow trucks at different locations mm. we also do collaborations with hospitals where our staff we go to visit with the Rosoa um, road safety officers wives association mm. where they go to visit with um gifts to traffic victims um, traffic crashes victims mm. at the hospitals so we do a whole lot. We also do collaborations with organizations who will come in, come in collaboration with us so that this can um, be, um, the, the message can be widely spread. Mm. Talking about collaboration, so, you know, uh, over time we've seen sister agencies fight dirty on the streets of Lagos. Uh, how do you um, collaborate with other agencies and organizations for enhanced road safety? We collaborate, we collaborate with, um, I want to believe, not just the traffic management agencies, mm. with other agencies as well. Now, let's take a look at the NDLA. We collaborate with them when it comes to the issue of alcohol and drug use. Okay. We collaborate with almost all the agencies, and we have very robust relationship with all of them. So we call them, they are at our back and call. They call us, we are at their back and call. So, so we have, it's a win-win for the... It's a win-win for the both It's of not us. a situation where you have... One other uniform, the cat and fighting rat. the other one. We do, we do not have that in Especially Lagos around Oshodi. For FRC Lagos State, we do not have that. Okay, L let's hope so. So let's talk about technology and uh, data analysis, uh, of course, used by Lagos State FRC to predict and prevent road accidents. Okay, um, we have the um, data-driven identification of accident-prone areas okay. within also, you know, we just introduced the mobile app where you can get the black spot areas of the road you are applying. So let's say you are going from Lagos to Ibadan and there's an accident prone area within that location. Mm -hmm. The mobile app, once you have downloaded it and it's on your phone, gives you a notice, you know, beeps from your phone to let you know that there is a black spot ahead of you. Now you can also do, um, there, there are so many things you can do with the mobile app, um, 
uh, the FRC mobile app. It's downloadable. It's downloadable. Where it's, can we get it? It's on the Google um, Play, Store. Apps, uh, Play Store. Okay. So you can download it there, and then you have it on your phone. You fill all the necessary things, and then you get to do so many. There are so many things you can do: the driver's license, the vehicle um, license. Give us the backend um, information. Oh. Just from your device? From your device. You mm. can give us information of a particular area and then you see us swift into action. Okay. Also, mm. yeah. okay. Go, also go, we go. have um, digital platforms where we report traffic um, um, violations and traffic prone areas um, so that people can have um, ample information about the area they are okay. applying. So there are so many ways mm. that we use technology in uh, Federal Safety Corps. Okay, for you to get to this level... Uh, your, your rank is equivalent to a captain in Nigerian army. Uh, what are your personal experiences? In terms of? In terms of uh, your job description and, of course, discharging your duties. Discharging my duty is not, um, is not something that is very, is not a rocket science. Mm. I've been trained, properly trained, before I got into the job. And then you, you rise accordingly. But in whatever department you find yourself, you rise accordingly. So, in 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 federal safety, it's not, it's not um, it's not an issue when it comes to ranking. Um, when it comes to ranking and yeah. growth. Okay, let's also move on now. How does the FRC plan to handle expected increase? You know, we have so many people not using the pedestrian bridge. I've tried to, hmm. on my own, go around some places uh, to ask why. And some people will still tell you it's easier to just cross. Uh, recently, I was around uh, Osho, the UK, you know, and I had interaction with some persons. So how do we handle such persons? Okay, so part of our focus for 2024 is also usage of that pedestrian bridges. Mm -hmm. And we are making sure that First, we do the um, enlightenment process. We take them through it. We go to the pedestrian um, stairs to introduce people into what their safety would look like when they ply through those pedestrian bridges. Mm. And then we we'll collaborate. We then collaborate with agencies that matter mm. on the enforcement of usage of that, those pedestrian bridges. Mm. So very soon you're going to see because it's, it's quite of dangerous for you to leave the pedestrian. The pedestrian bridge is more like your place of safety when it comes to road safety. So you now using the other way around is a recipe to disaster, let me put it like but, that. But some people feel in Lagos, it's easy. the pedestrian bridge is where you have all these talks hiding and waiting to carry out. That's why I said we're going to collaborate. at night. At night. That's mm. why I said we're going to collaborate. Now we are going through the enlightenment process. Now, we're going to collaborate with agencies that matter to make sure those, um, if we have them, mm. will not will stop happening. And then we make sure that people use the pedestrian bridges mm. more. Okay, quickly, are, are there special patrols or checkpoints planned to manage reckless driving and other violations? Yes, like I said, on the Lake Ekwe corridors, on the um, Lagos Ibadan corridor, mm. we're going to have our men there that will make sure that people are brought to justice so okay so what advice will you give to drivers and commuters for staying safe on lagos road uh, during this festival? my season? advice is majorly to the passengers mm -hmm. please speak up please speak up when your driver is driving recklessly please speak up when you know that your driver has been drunk before pulling that machine called mm -hmm. a vehicle and then for drivers please adhere strictly to the traffic rules and regulation Speeding takes you nowhere. Like I tell people when I go to motor parks, I tell them that the number of hours that you have to spend from here to Lagos, God willing, is still the number of hours you spend. So whether you speed, you overspeed, if you don't get yourself injured or into another problem, you will get there at that, point, that appointed time. So softly so let's assume we are, both, the we are driving different vehicles and I'm running on a very high speed and you're taking your time. The difference between our arrival time is probably 10 minutes. The pro difference is because as you're leaving, something may happen to you that will delay your, your, your journey. Mm. And that will pass by. Or it's either you get there, you find maybe you get there, there are traffic um, uh, gridlocks mm. on your way. And you don't get there on the appointed time that you have appointed for yourself. Mm. So 
let's press the pedal softly mm -hmm. and get to our de destination in peace. Uh, talking about traffic, I came to realize that in Lagos we have spiritual uh, hold up. You just be on the road, nothing is happening in front, but everybody is talking. I was thinking maybe it's a normal thing. And when you get to the spot where we are having this uh, good luck, nothing is really happening. What is, do we have spiritual people? There's nothing the spiritual about holding is it um, physical? It's not that traffic the road is bad. It's still part of what we talk about, distracted driver. Mm. Some people are distracted. They know that there are so many people behind them. In their hearts, they actually know that they are. But they are not focused enough to understand that those people are also going somewhere. Mm. So it's either they are doing something on their phone and you want to get by and you know they are just there doing their thing. So it's part of what we've been talking about. Distracted driving, you pressing your phone, you talking, you listening to something that mm. you know will take your focus off the road. So it's not a spiritual problem. It's not a spiritual Okay, problem. quickly, uh, looking forward, uh, beyond the Utah, what long-term strategies is the Lagos FRS implementing to improve road safety and oh. reduce accident rates? Okay, we have pub um, our public enlightenment pr um, programs will still go on. Mm -hmm. We'll still be talking to passengers now more on the radios, on the TV, mm -hmm. at the motor parks, churches, uh, you know, everywhere we go to. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to... Um, have a stricter enforcement like i told you when enlightenment has surpassed its level you know when we are done doing the enlightenment and we see that okay it's not yielding anything we go into it we swift into enforcement mm. so enforcement will go on so that we can have an improved improved safety of our people on the road also we do the uh, expansion of the use of technology we make sure people download the mobile app so that they can have ample information of what it is on their road, what they should have mm. on their road. And then the radar gun technology also is still there. We have an expansion of it by God's grace. We'll have um, less traffic accident. Okay, we, we want to thank you for finding time to be on the program. We'd like thank to you. have you again and um, probably have uh, the commandant himself uh, come on board to so that we can we can tackle some issues. I'll make sure of that. <laughs> All right, that was the uh, route commandant Elizabeth uh, Olua Damilola Jayola, Lagos Sector Public Enlightenment Officer, who just helped us make sense of the discussion. But this is our parting uh, parting words, if you want to put it that way, from our Lagos Network Center. Never break your promises. Keep every promise. It makes you. Incredible. We'll be going on a break. TMI continues shortly. My name is Daniel Price. Ose Debame.